Hello, Hello, everybody. Let's see, what do we got going? Hi, everyone. I'm I'm Lizzie. And I'm Robbie. And we are here. I think we want to keep this open. Oh, sure, sure. Um, and so we are here to talk about this book behind us. We have it in front of us, too. Patty Harmony, opening night. It's out today. We're so excited it's finally out today. When we... um. This is book two, for those of you who don't know. We have the first book as well, which is Hattie Harmony, Worry Detective, which introduces Hattie and her friends at Wildwood Elementary School. and um, For their first day of school. For their first day of school. And we were trying to figure out when we want to, because we, we feel like you can have endless stories that Hattie can help because there's so many firsts that can be overwhelming as a young kid. And so we we were trying to figure out like what kind of second book would we would we want to have? Yes. We there's we went through a list of different ideas and we landed on something we did all the time. Something we're very familiar with and that is opening night. We've had many uh, opening nights in our lives and we still continue to have opening nights. We do. <laughs> But as you'll see in the book, we're going to read it to all of you. Um, it's not just about performance anxiety. It's also about uh, all of all of Hattie's friends have all different sorts of responsibilities because it takes a large group effort to put on something like a show. And having responsibilities for the first time can be a very scary, overwhelming, overwhelming new thing. It could be an overwhelming feeling. Um, well, what do you think? Do you think that we should uh, pop into to just to reading? I think so. Okay, let's just get into it. We have our it. same amazing illustrator, Marissa, um, Marissa Valdez. Marissa Valdez. We have to give a shout out to Marissa Valdez. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations. Okay. I wonder, should I do one page and we read off of one? I can get a book from Oh, one that's a smart idea. I don't know where you're going to find a book. <gasps> oh, my. Da, 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 Almost as good as that opening music. Um, okay. So should I do so this? So you'll do the, well. <laughs> I'll do this and you read? Okay, okay. Let's do that. That sounds about right. Okay. You got it? Okay. Hattie Harmony, Opening Night by... Elizabeth Olson and Robbie Arnett. Illustrations by Marissa Valdez. Opening night had arrived and Wildwood Elementary was prepping for the school play. There was still work to be done and some of the students had a case of the opening night jitters. Luckily, Hattie Harmony, worry detective, was ready to help. Ring, ring. Patty Harmony, worry detective, how can I help with your worries today? <gasps> Patty, it's Pearl Peppercord. I have a terrible feeling. I think it's stage fright. Don't you worry, Pearl. Patty said, meet me at the theater. I'll be there just as soon as you can say, worry, worry, go away. There's no time for you today. It's opening night of the school play. Hattie put on her trusty worry detective tool belt. It was time to get to work. Pearl, 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 are you here? I'm here, Hattie. Pearl cried. I think I've forgotten all my lines. What am I going to do? Hattie reached in her tool belt and grabbed Jenny Journal. Sometimes when we get excited, our brains move super duper fast and it makes it hard for us to think. But Hattie, said Pearl, I need to say my lines out loud, not write them down. If you give it a try, you might find that journaling can help us understand our feelings and organize our thoughts. I always have my pencil on hand. Why don't you start with I feel and then fill in the blank? I feel nervous. I feel like spaghetti. Hattie, 
it's working. I could hear myself think. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, Patty said, you can always write your feelings down. Why don't you keep Jenny Journal? Said Hattie. Then suddenly, boom! A loud noise came from behind the stage curtain. Oh no! What did it that one second? Eek, 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 mm -hmm. eek, eek. Straight off the press. I ruined my set. I spilled paint everywhere. You don't see more swiggle tooth. Don't you worry. Patty said. Uh oh, our brightness went away. It's okay. We'll make it, we'll make this better just as soon as you can say worry, worry, go, go away. away. There's, There's no, no time for you today. today. Patty splashed her tail in the spilled paint and started to use it as a brush. A forest isn't supposed to look like that. Seymour squealed. Forests are green. But in the play, the forest can be any color in the whole wide world. Patty said. Just use your imagination. But what if people don't like it? Asked Seymour. It needs to be perfect. Seymour, there is no such thing as perfect. Every tree is different, just like every one of us is different. That's what makes us special. This set doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to come from within you. You were right, Hattie. This might be my favorite set ever. Uh-oh. Who turned out the light? Hattie hollered. Whoopsie. Shouted Duncan Del Mar. And now I can't turn them back on. Oh no. Patty pulled out her trusty flashlight and discovered Duncan pressing all the buttons in a panic. I'm the director and I can't even turn the lights on. How will anyone be able to see the show? Don't you worry, Duncan. Patty said. I'll find the right tool just as soon as you can say, Worry, worry, worry go, go away. There's, there's no time for you today. Patty pulled out Timmy Timer. Let me introduce you to my good friend, Timmy. He can remind us to take breaks when things become too overwhelming. Hattie said. Come on. Hattie and Duncan smelled the grass and felt the cool breeze. They used all their senses to put their minds at ease. I feel so much calmer, said Duncan. A break really can help. Ding, ding. Why don't you keep Timmy Timer? He'll remind you to take a break when you need it. Thank you, Hattie, said Duncan. You're welcome. After all, you directors have a lot on your minds. It was almost showtime. Everyone lined up on stage in their costumes. Um, Hattie? Squeaked Bonnie, Be Bonnie Beverly. I think I ripped my costume. Can you fix it? Don't you worry. I'll find the right tool as soon as you can say, Worry, worry, worry go, go away. away. There's, There's no time, time for you today. today. Hattie. Hattie pulled out Sasha's sewing kit and got to work. Suddenly, Hattie's hands started to shake. I'm a little nervous about sewing. What if I can't fix it? Worried, Hattie. It's okay. Just try your best. I said. Sometimes when I get nervous, I take deep, slow breaths. Then imagine I'm in a beautiful, peaceful place like the beach. Now imagine sand in our hands, the water touching our toes, and the hot, hot sun smiling at us. Ah, this is so relaxing. I can hear the waves. I didn't know imagining a peaceful place could make you feel peaceful too. I think I'm ready to stitch your costume now. Everyone gathered backstage for one last good luck hug. If we feel scared or anxious while we are on stage, said Hattie, just remember 
We are all on, we are all in this together, and together we can do anything. Patty reached in her tool belt and pulled out her old friend, Miss Mirror, so everyone could see their reflection. Worry, worry, worry go, go away. away. There's no time for you today. today. It's opening, opening night, night of the school play. play. We got this. Places, everyone, said Duncan. As the play ended, Hattie and all of her friends took a big bow. The audience loved it, but most importantly, everyone had fun. Bravo! 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 Hattie made sure to congratulate all of her friends. Opening night was a success. Oh, and one more thing. Hattie said with a smile. If you ever need me for anything at all, you can always call your friend. Bring, bring, bring. Hattie Harmony, worry detective. The end. The end. So, Robbie. Yes, Lizzie. We use some new tools in this book. We use journaling mm -hmm. with Jenny Journal. Yes. We use creative self-expression or creative thinking when Seymour Swiggletooth thinks that he he makes a mistake and wants everything to be perfect and he learns that creative self-expression isn't about Yes, him. mistakes, failures, those are all part of the process. And then we also talk about brain breaks and using our sense our senses while we have brain breaks. Yes. And we talk about guided imagery. And we also talk about the affirmation. Positive affirmations, the mantra, the worry, worry, go away, there's no time for you today. So within these tools, how many, do you use all of these in your day-to-day -day life? I or do. Or did you use them as kids without even knowing? I, I, you know, as a kid, I didn't have uh, these tools. And so as an adult, learning these tools um, has become really helpful. Um, I am just starting to journal, which is something that I've never done. I, I, I have always, um, you know, you practiced create creative thinking and, and guided imagery and affirmations. Um, but I never, never really knew about brain breaks, which is, which is so important, um, to do when you're feeling overwhelmed, um, to say, hang on a second and, you know, take a breath. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what other, what other things do we want to talk about with opening nights? Do you have any advice from your own opening nights that you can share? Anything you learn as a child or as an adult? I think looking back on, on the opening nights that I had, um, I think that it was, it, it's important to to breathe i think one of the first uh one of the lessons or the um tools. tools that hattie learns in the first book worry detective is all about breathing in and um breathing out and that's something that seems so so simple and so ordinary but it's actually something that takes practice and it's something that i'm still practicing today breathing in through my nose and then blowing out in what is um, the shape like of a, a straw, the shape of a straw. <laughs> really, These are things we actively work it on. It really slows, it really slows down everything. And it's really a nice centering um, way, way to center yourself. And yeah, really important. It gives you mental clarity. And I think the greatest thing with the Hattie series is or the greatest challenge as well has been trying to figure out tools that we have used as adults and trying to create situations and language for kids where they can relate to it. And maybe it hopefully it doesn't feel too complicated, mm. but even if there's just an association with the image of Hattie that can connect them to these tools on a set on a third read or fourth read or 25th read, um, that would be pretty special if Hattie makes kids remember, oh, breathe in through my nose and breathe out through mm -hmm. my mouth. And also just to put language to complicated feelings, I think has been really 
really, it, it would have been really important as a kid. And we had really big emotions. And instead of just like punching a wall or, you know, you're not a kid, you're not punching walls, but you do throw things and uh, get frustrated and throw yourself on a bed or something, it might be useful to realize that the big feeling actually has a word. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that identifying they, it. The awareness is half the battle. Yeah. Do you have a favorite um, illustration in the in new this, in the new book? In the new book, there's so many. I I have. There's a few that I I, I truly Bonnie love. Bonnie Beverly's a new favorite character. Of yeah, mine. and I I I loved the way that you just voiced her. It Thank felt you. Very. Um, I think Bonnie Jennifer Coolidge. I think Bonnie Beverly. Um, doing her, her visual, like visualizing the beach, mm. uh, with her little visor on is something I find really funny. And I love the way Marissa transformed Bonnie Beverly's actual costume into a swimsuit mm -hmm. for the beach scene. Gracious. I just, I just think Marissa is so incredible at interpreting our words and our humor um and creating just so much visual imagery what about you do you have a favorite uh i have a few favorites i really um i like all the nighttime um images i think those are all really spectacular and and um even like something like this page here oops where we have, I don't know if we can see it, but even just like the fish that's up there in the fish bowl, it's just like kind of shivering up there. It's just like <laughs> these little moments that we find. Um, on, There's a on, lot of hidden hidden jokes in this. Yeah, that are so fun. I love the negative space. I, I think it's always so fun to have so much negative space um, and uh really imaginative even though it feels like well there's nothing on this page but it, it it's still saying so much and then just her like watercolor kind of palette um that like pastel -y palette i think is so so uh um pretty and um really i mean i'm just really amazed by all of all of her work mm -hmm. um i think the thing that's also fun about having opening night as this subject is it also, and not just the kids participating, like I said at the beginning, if you were here, um, they're not just participating as performers, but they're participating as the painters of the set, the costume designer, mm, the right. director, that there's lots of ways, there are lots of opportunities out there and ways for us to express ourselves and things that we can try um, and trying new things. I think it also presents that as an opportunity for kids as well um, in ways that maybe they wouldn't normally think about. Sometimes you watch uh, an animated show that you love so much and you want to be the main character, but if you can also think about the person who's drawing the main character, mm. I think that's pretty important for kids who maybe don't feel like they're a performer, but yeah. they want to be a part of some sort of creative expression. I like that, that opening night really Encourages. explores all the behind the scenes and in front of the scene. Yeah, it's, it, they, it doesn't happen without everybody coming together and putting in their creative input, or even if they're, even if they're just moving around a, a set piece and, um, you know, helping uh, set up chairs. Mm -hmm. Like these are all, these are all people that are important to, to the process of putting on any event mm -hmm. and, and there um, are many ways to participate and it's and they're all and it's all so valuable what are things that inspire your creativity or curiosity robbie ooh um i think um uh, listening i think listening to people um you know, on the streets, people, mm -hmm. um, friends, and um, really having a curiosity to understanding where people come from and where, what, how they're feeling and why they're feeling the way that they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that curiosity is so important and kind of the fuel for my creativity. Mm -hmm. What's, what about you? I would say mine's similar. I really, I think traveling is something mm. that I luckily get to do for work. 
um, I get to work in lots of different cities, yes. depending on what I'm filming. And I, I think that's really just connected to getting outside of what our own routines are and seeing people who are very, or not even, they only have to be that different, but just something different than what I'm used to. I, I always want to, to be able to explore what other people's lives are like. Yeah, there's an excitement to getting outside of your own routine. And I think that th that's when some of these tools can really come in and as come in handy because yeah. you sometimes when you're outside of your own environment or you know you're away from home you get a little worried or anxious or overwhelmed um but or when i see a crowd and and maybe there's a crowd because people are playing music in a park this right. happened to us recently sure did and robbie said let's go over there and i got nervous because i get nervous in crowds and then i and then I was just like, you know what? I got this. Yeah. I can not overthink this, be in my body, use these tools, and know I'll be fine. Um, what's happening? Oh, I think they're just kind of uh, saying hello. Hello, oh, Liz Vaughn. Okay. Hello. I just wanted to make sure that it was all working. I think it's all working. Okay. Okay, good. Um, well, Actually, should we go to some questions yeah, let's go that to were some, asked? Yeah, let's go to some questions. That were submitted earlier. The first question was asked by um, uh, Emily, um, 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 Emily, 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 Emily G. Emily G. from San Rafael, which we know where San Rafael is. Yes, we do. Um, California. What made you want to write a second book of Hattie Harmony? Well, I think we wanted. We always knew that we wanted. We to want to make write a hundred books. Hattie, a book series. I think. We, we feel like there are lots of ways to put her in situations that could be very helpful for lots of firsts. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I so we knew that we were going to write a second book. We just didn't necessarily know which subject we would right. tackle. Um, asked by Laurel from Los Angeles, California. Laurel says, I'm six years old and I was wondering if you have fun writing Hattie Harmony stories. Laurel, we have fun. We do have fun. I also I also think sometimes it feels hard. Mm. Like editing. I think editing sometimes can feel hard. Yeah. And you can't quite understand why something maybe isn't working. Um, so there's, I mean, it's not, I, I think when you are working on something that you care a lot about, it's, yes, it's fun. Um and it's also sometimes yeah, hard work. Yeah, the, the research that goes into it, and it can be extensive and be time-consuming and challenging, but um, ultimately really rewarding when you have a finished piece that you're really excited about. And um, What's your favorite? What What is the part that you find the most fun the, of the process the of writing The most books? fun for me is that initial spark that initial moment when you have um, a new character idea or mm. a new situation idea or um, some sort of uh, uh, um, theme that you want to explore. Those are those moments when it just kind of all makes sense and, and they happen quickly and then um, you kind of have to keep that momentum going yourself, which is a lot of the, the practice and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think my favorite part is getting the first illustrations back from Marissa. That's always it's, really like a, it's like a present. Like it's right. a thing we have, we don't, we can't, we, we, we can't have control yeah, yeah. and we don't, yeah, we don't see her stages. And so it's really exciting. Yeah. And they usually don't have color at first. They're just drawings. Right. And we just still love them so much. Um, asked by Jaleel Forty um, from Puerto Rico, would you do the voice of an animated cartoon character? Um, would I? Yeah, would you? I think I would. Would you? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I that think sounds, sounds fun. That sounds cool. I don't know if I'd be any good at it because I have no consistency. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if if. if my voice works. Pearl for Peppercorn's a different, Pearl Peppercorn's the only one I got. I think, that. I think you got Pearl Peppercorn. But Duncan and Seymour. You're I, doing a good job. They're I different sounds, every time. It's very fun. Um, then we have, um, 
question by Ava. Ava from the UK. Have you experienced writer's block? And if so, how do you handle it? Mm. That's a good question for you, Rob. Yes, yes. The, the answer is yes. I have experienced writer's block. Um, usually what I do when I experience writer's block is I, um, what do I do? I have to basically, first of all, identify, become aware. It's like, oh, I'm not right. Why am I, why, why am I not writing? What's going on? This is what I do and it's not coming out. Um, and then I have to just kind of sit there and say, okay, I'm having writer's block. And I so the first thing you do is you identify. I identify the- Just like Hattie does with Exactly. Friends. And so I'm, okay, this is writer's <laughs> block chill this isn't really what i was hoping to do today um but then there there are a lot of things i mean you can go um i mean this is one of the reasons why i started journaling um and just writing down random words or random thoughts in um in a journal can mm -hmm. kind of jump start an idea and all of a sudden you see two words together and you're like wait a second that's something um or i will read um, yeah. reading always kind of is inspiring to read other people's words. Um, I will go and, uh, take a walk, um, just being outside. You walk a lot. That's always kind of helpful for clearing your mind. Um, I'll play guitar or drums or something that kind of just keeps me active and not consumed with the thought of, I have writer's block, I'm never gonna be able to write again, oh, I'm doomed. And so... Um, yeah, I feel like for me, cause I'm not, I'm more, I'm more of, Rob, I'm more of an editor. Um, I come up with some of the, some of, I mean, I, I it's a collaboration, a but you too. do a first draft. Sure. I'm not a first draft girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But when it comes to creative blocks, like if I'm trying to approach a character or mm. make character choices or decisions, I think like what you're saying with reading, it's really helpful to sometimes reach outside yourself from other people's work that you might find inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that cracks something open and sometimes it doesn't, but then journaling I think is also a really helpful tool. So everyone could get a Jenny journal. Yes. Um, you name them whatever you want, but her name's Jenny. You know, but... Yeah, Hattie calls her Jenny. Um, Chantel um, from the Netherlands says, um, Hi, I am Chantel, and I am almost graduating as a teacher. Congratulations. We... Yeah. I... Um, in the Doing Netherlands. The good work. Um, do you have any tips for how to use your books in class? Um, well, you've read them to a group of first graders before. Yeah. How did you guys use it in class? Um, I find it, um, what I, I kind of, I, 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 well, for that specific thing, I had um, cutouts of the characters. And I don't know if you have uh, those capabilities, but. Um, but maybe picking an activity, is that what you mean? Yeah, to? if you can kind of pick an activity around. Um, around, uh, you know, maybe it's opening night and um, kind of assign, maybe assign um, different kids different um, tasks or jobs to do in the theater, whether it is um, directing the acting, the lighting director. You want them to do that with the I book? Know. That sounds not. crazy. This is just off the cuff. Um, don't listen to him. You already got I, too much going yeah, on with maybe the that's, classroom. Maybe that's, Jeez. maybe that's too much. And you want her to pick up props for these kids well, maybe, too? Well, maybe the best thing Gosh. to do, yeah, maybe the best thing to do is, is just um, read it and talk about the tips and maybe and apply it to the classroom, apply it yeah. to whatever you're working on and apply some of the tools, the breathing, the journaling, you know. May I interrupt? Yeah, of course. Um, the, there is one of the steps that we do while writing these books is we then share it with a professional children's uh, emotional behavioral learning psychologist. And so we try to make sure that the language we're using is language that she thinks could be the most helpful. Um, and I do think that one of the things we learned from her, we knew we wanted the kids to take a break. That was something that we researched as a tool when kids feel overwhelmed, it's sometimes good for them to take a break. And she was the one who said, 
it's it's actually most productive for kids to use their senses during a break. Mm -hmm. And in our first book, we also talk about squishy ball. Um, so I think there's something maybe to bring into the classroom that has something to do with like uh, smell and touch and sound just to uh, make so if kids are feeling distracted, they can then focus their energy on onto something. Um, and I think that might be, that's something that came from a woman who's a professional and we are not, but mm -hmm. um, that's why we ended up saying, we say in the book, using all of our senses to put our mind at ease uh, was because that was uh, a tool that she uses with her, with the children that see her. Um, and then we have Amaris, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name Amaris, wrong, yeah. um, from Georgia. Will there, there be another audiobook release read by you guys? Yes. yes. We've yes. already recorded yes, it. Yes, we've recorded it. And Howdy Harmony opening night audiobook will be, uh, if uh, maybe I'm assuming it comes out today, right? I These are things I don't know. I think it might come out today. Um, so look for that. I hope so. Wherever sure audiobooks are uh, or sold. Uh, Noah from Noah O'Fallon. Yeah. Um, um, from uh, Missouri. Missouri says, if you could live in one children's book other than your own, which would it be and why? If you could live in one. Return to Oz. Ooh, that's a good one. I would like to live in that world. Ooh. It's kind of like spooky and scary, but like, I don't know, really magical. I kind of just want to go up to a, an emerald stone and go, Oz, and then it become a real existing thing. I just love that book and those terrifying books. And I loved that movie as a child, which says a lot about me because mm. it's a very terrifying and creepy yes, yeah, movie. Horrifying. Um, what would I, I, I would probably um maybe maybe dr seuss because yeah, i like to cool get to too. like make up words and like wear cool clothes and have different colors and hang out with like cat in the hat mm. and uh um these just like let the imagination run wild um that sounds fun i too. think that would be that kind of feels like a very cool and carefree and uh stylish um, stylish world i think i'd i'd jump into that world um robert from santan valley arizona how has hattie helped you guys overcome worries in your personal life i i think we both yeah, talked about this talking about but that. um jenny Jur i don't have my my journal's name isn't isn't named my journal's not named yeah, you should name your journal um but i've been journaling more this year and that's been the most helpful new habit that i have been forming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean i not to sound like a you know copycat but uh i have uh i have also taken up um a journal and it has been really helpful and even though i've never done that before and sometimes don't know what to write it is still nice to just write words and you just put them together and um it kind of you know centers yourself and kind of gets you ready for your day i like to do it in the morning yeah i think there's something about um the thoughts that we have to slow them down enough to not speak them but to have to write them i think is a really helpful Mm. Uh, repetition. Um, Kaylee mm -hmm. um, from Massachusetts. Um, what is a topic you each want to cover in your books? I really like the idea of covering something like swimming for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think yeah, swimming, yeah. I think it's because I might be a little scared to swim in the ocean myself. Sure. Um, and it doesn't have to be an ocean. It could be a pool. But I think I had a bit of a fear as a kid. Not the act of it, but the experience of water um, overwhelmed me. And I think it's a really crazy thing. We like throw, we like teach kids how to swim. And you see people with babies, there's like dunking them underwater. So yeah. they get used to it and comfortable and learn how to hold their breath. And I think that's like a really 
vulnerable thing. It's a really crazy thing yeah, that sure. we do and that we learn to do. And it's also really an important skill um, for safety reasons. And so anyway, I, I'm kind of interested in in what that is, which which doesn't mean it would be a book about all the different things that come up while swimming, but more about, you know, the steps that we have to take right. in order to get comfortable. If pool we, party, first pool party and all that. Yeah. Like everything. What about you? Um, I think mine would center around flying, getting in an airplane, um, or even just being really high heights. Um, mm -hmm. there is something, um, there is something I've always kind of had that fear. And so, um, you know, again, it's not something that is normal for us, us uh, land creatures <laughs> to be all of a sudden put in a little tube and been like shoot them off into the universe or even to like <laughs> climb up on a hundred foot ladder and be like, how's it going down there? Yeah. Those are let those, me fix the light bulb. Yeah, well, let me, let like me, six feet up even. That's yeah, terrifying. those aren't things that we innately feel comfortable doing. And I think a lot of fear and anxiety surrounds those. So mm -hmm. those would be something that I could and love it's also, to see. There's a reason we fear things sometimes. Yeah. They're actually, it's helpful to have fear because it means that there maybe should be limits to whatever right. we feel safe with. Like It's a know. defense thing. You're detecting danger, danger. Yeah. And that is a very positive um, the, response. Yeah. It's not a bad feeling. No, 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 It's no. a smart feeling. It's like a yeah. good thing. And then you kind of examine that. Why do I feel fear? Why, why is there danger? And what can I do to uh, adjust? Um, all right. And then we have um, Adriana from Davis, California. What was your favorite part about making Hattie Harmony? Something that we've already kind of yeah, touched on. We did. So, um, so, so I hope we answered your question yeah, before. I really like the illustrations. I love the illustrations. You like the and, first ideas. And coming up with those sparks. Amanda from New Jersey. What inspired you guys to write children's books about such important topics? Um, well, do you want to talk about that? Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, I've always been really interested in writing children's books and I was writing children's books for a while and, um, and you know, it, I wasn't able to get them published. And, um, and so that was, that was hard because, um, you know, it felt like a fit, a fail, a, a failure and, uh, um, but I kept going and I kept pursuing it and um, kept learning about how to write children's books by reading other children's books um, and immersing myself in that community, going to libraries and um, and then got in touch with a publisher here at Penguin. And um, she really responded positively to the writing and was excited by the writing and had an idea for um, a topic to explore and asked if we'd ever thought about um, the, um, the mental health and um, anxiety and worrying. And so uh, being an anxious child, I thought that's a really important uh, topic to discuss. And so Lizzie and I then thought about um, ways to approach that. And we both uh, kind of brainstormed ideas and um, everything that um, I like writing is really character driven. And so it was like, first thing, let's think of a character that can kind of help us navigate this world. And that character was Hattie Harmony. And that's kind of the, we almost didn't know more than that at a point. It was just like, well, we have the yeah, we have a Hattie Harmony. Hattie Harmony. She's a worry detective, and it's kind of like a film noir. And at first, she was a little girl, and um, and we started writing in her voice and kind of creating her community. And then we sent that off um, to Marissa, and Marissa came back um, with illustrations of animals, and we were like, oh, mm -hmm. this is awesome. And um, that was kind of the origin story to Hattie Harmony. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley asked probably one of the most important questions. Um, how's the gardening going? You guys, it's going well. It's thriving. It's really thriving. It's been a long time since I've been able to garden for springtime. And it's been really exciting. I grew from seed this year because I wanted to challenge myself and learn something new because I had the time 
And that was one of the most thrilling experiences I've ever had. I'm still not very good at transplanting the seeds from inside to outside, but the but the seeds that were grown directly into the soil did very well. Mm -hmm. We we were, I have to say, we were a little worried um, coming um, to New York um, because we have a beautiful new blueberry bush. That's not new. I mean, not, I'm new in the Five sense. Five years old. <laughs> new in the sense of it, it just kind of started blooming. Yeah, or, it's the time, it's the season. It's the right. time of year That's where I mean. we get the harvest. And so we've, we started battling the Producing squirrels. Producing new blueberries. And we started and, battling the squirrels uh, and the we, birds. We had uh, um, a, uh, a tree for, for a little while that was unnoticed by the, the critters. And at a time when they didn't know. Now they noticed. So yeah, we covered it and uh, we're hoping to go back. Um, we're saying a lot of worry, worry, go away, squirrel. There's no time for you today. Um, <coughs> and uh, I drink water and cough. Easy. <coughs> one sip Some at things a time. are in our control. Some things aren't. That's right. Uh, okay, we have one more question from uh, Romania. Romania, Alexia. What do you think is the best way to deal with anxiety attacks? I'm assuming, mm -hmm. and especially today when it may seem very hard to just be yourself. That's a really good question. Yeah. Well, I think you know what's a, what's the the good thing about having lots of panic attacks is you learn how to navigate them mm. when they start to come up. Yeah. So luckily I get an inner, because I'm, I have worked with them for so many years when they start to creep up, um, instead of letting my mind wander into that spiral, um, I start thinking about all the things it's the census thing. So, yeah. I start, uh, having to put myself back in my body. I think breath work works for some people. For me, it's really about verbalizing where the things around me, jacket, necklace, uh, earring, or even, even like if a I color. Have to jump, get up and do jumping jacks or just... Uh, Does that, that help? That's helped me before. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I, think, I think when I feel um, kind of out of my body and out of control, um, I like, I like to walk. Um, I've, I've done that before, but I do think that walking, um, is just also a way of, of breath because when you're walking, you're kind of or running or jumping jacks or doing something like that physical, you're kind of forced to breathe. Mm. And so it is sometimes I need that reminder to breathe. Um, and, uh, the second part of our question is about, especially today when it may seem very hard to be yourself. I don't know if I have anxiety. I don't have when my at my own experiences when I have panic attacks. It's not usually around that, but I do think the fear of trying to be yourself. It, I think right now we uh, maybe you mean when you're on social media or something. And I think it's very hard to be yourself. I on think social media. I think it's really. I think once we have our our comparative brain right now is um, so present and so every it's everywhere because that's you know we're we're constantly looking at our our phone and and judging ourselves and comparing ourselves to others and why aren't I like that or why don't I look like that and and I think that we have to just remember that like we're as kind of um, simple and um, maybe even trite as it sounds, it's we are each on our own journey. We're each on our own path. And and that is it, it, it's so unique and so special to kind of remember that, that there is like never going to be this moment. There's never going to be this this minute in time. And to kind of just think about that from a bigger perspective, which is really difficult to do. And um, it's something that I have to constantly work at and just remember that, wow, there's, there's never going to be um, a, another moment like this where we're mm -hmm. hanging out with you and 
and um, and 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 really kind of just like thinking about that and staying really present. And I think that if you can stay really present and not let your mind wander, um, then you, you can kind or to of- at least be able to identify when it is. Yeah, and, and, and if it is, it's okay. And yeah. you can kind of just acknowledge that. And it's like, oh, I'm judging myself. Okay, chill out. I'm, I don't need to judge myself. And I'm one good. of the guided meditations I love is uh, from this app I use is you're supposed to like name the yeah. name the thing you're doing, like planning, yeah. judging. Right. Um, and those are, and, and, that's, the, and that's all I do when I'm like yeah. sitting, trying to just, you know, whatever, do breath work. I'm like, oh, I'm planning. I'm planning. I'm right. always planning. Right. Or if I write something that I'm like not liking, I'm judging and just kind of like let it be what it is. And maybe it spurs the next thought. Anyway. Anyway, to wrap this up, since yeah. we've been, we've, we've enjoyed your questions. Yeah. Thank you so thank much you for, for joining them. us and, and submitting the questions. We're going to do a rapid fire yeah. 22 questions in two minutes. So thank you um, for providing us. Yeah. With these with these fun questions that we yeah. haven't looked at. Yeah, so this is this okay. will be interesting. We'll do it quickly. Okay. So, so we don't and they're rapid fires. Rapid which is we're fire. both we very bad at yeah, editing we ourselves. Really, yeah. We're we this can, is when we get in trouble. Okay, so here we go. Uh where were you born? Los Angeles. Arlington, Virginia. <laughs> Who would you want to play you in a movie? No clue. Who, uh, who would I want to play in a movie? Um, oh shoot. Um, Gemma Rollins. Gemma Rollins? Yeah. Uh, then, uh, I'll, I'll do Cassavetes. Um, what was your first job? Uh, first job, I think it was babysitting. My first job was, uh, Noah's Bagels. I worked at Noah's Bagels. Um, what chore do you hate doing? Floors. Um... I'm starting to embrace it though, but I used to hate doing floors and I really don't like cleaning toilets. I was going to say cleaning toilets. That's I was like, I have a hard time. Uh, what is your biggest fear? Uh, hmm. Mm, 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 mm. I really don't like flying. I really don't like flying. Um, I don't know. Death. Death, that's a fear. Um, okay. Uh, who makes you laugh the most? Uh, me. Yeah, I was going to say me. you, the but then I was me, trying right? to figure out if there is, it is you, but I was it's trying to figure me. out if there's like a comedian that I wanted to give a shout sure, out to. Sure, I mean, Jacqueline uh, Novak. Jacqueline Novak, uh, um, John Early. John Early. Um, incredible comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, but who uh, makes you laugh? I know it's not me. Uh, uh, John Early. Uh, what <laughs> is the one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Where are we? Okay, what is one thing you need to have in your fridge at yeah, all times? Yeah, seven. Peanut butter? Peanut butter, yep. Um, I, I like that. Um, what is your favorite school subject? I had so many. Yeah, well, what do I you... loved school. Mm-hmm. I loved math. I loved chemistry. I loved English. Okay, one, English. Who is the most interesting person you met recently? Uh, Who have we met recently? I think the tall guy, um, tall guy Curtis, his name was Curtis, uh, and um, he was uh, helped us over at, uh, we did an event um, in Barnes, at Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. in um, Union Square, and he was the, one of the sweetest men um, we've met recently and very interesting and had a, it was just really open and, um, and sweet with us. I think the most interesting person I saw recently, mm. but I didn't get to meet them because I didn't want to bother them. Yeah. Was we went to see the Brooklyn symphony at the Brooklyn museum. Oh yeah. And there is a man, an older man in front of us, uh, who brought, uh, on his iPad, the music of all the movements that the symphony was playing. And I just wanted to know his whole life story. Yeah, he was good. He was going over it. He was, and he was going over it and he was, you know, following charting. it he with the music it. and he would make notes. And mm -hmm. I wanted to know all about his life. What is your middle name? Chase. Nicholas. What is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, it's people taking their shoes and socks off in public places mm, like mm, airplanes mm. and theaters yeah I, clipping their nails in public places is a, is a pet peeve even outside 
Mm, I, I think if you're sitting on a bench next to somebody, a stranger, and starts <laughs> clipping their nails. That happened to us recently, uh, what not your, me. <laughs> what is your favorite hobby? Uh, I'm really into uh, uh, well, gardening and pottery has become a new hobby. Yeah, what is my last favorite few hobby? Years. Um, ooh, I don't know. I, I, I need more hobbies. Um, what is your guilty pleasure? What is your guilty pleasure? I don't feel guilty about any of the things that make me happy. Yeah. To um, be honest. Do you have any hidden talents? Nope. <laughs> I don't know if I do either. They're all they're all just out in the open. Um, I, I push my I push my talents out to the world. What <laughs> color is your toothbrush? You I force them on the world people. actually. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, what is your, uh, what's the color, what color is your toothbrush? Bamboo color. Bamboo. Compostable. Yeah, we have the same toothbrush. I mean, that we don't use the same toothbrush. The same toothbrush <laughs> brand, that's a pet peeve of mine. Um, what is your pet's name? We no don't pet have pet. a pet. Probably we had a, we had a, uh, we had a fish called Mr. Putt-Putt and, uh, fish. Mr. Fisher yeah, Hart. Mr. Putt-Putt had a hard to time. To trans transition from, from store to home. Um, um what is your favorite word? Uh, favorite word? I don't know. Um, I, don't I say, I've one. been saying savage a lot lately. I don't, yeah. Um, I don't have a favorite word. What is the last album you bought or you streamed? The Nationals new album. Harry Nielsen. Um, uh, that would be the last one. What is the last gift you gave? I gave. Um, what did you give Veronica? I gave Veronica candlesticks and candlestick holders. And Jake, we gave a, a, a oh Jake, we a gave potted. a potted tomato plant from our garden. Yes. That's my little brother. He has a green thumb. What cause is dear to your heart? Um, anything the Stewart House. Yeah, anything that has to do with gun control um, and regulation. What is your greatest uh, achievement or love? <laughs> uh, where do you want to go that you've never been? Japan. Uh, Norway, mm. uh, Copenhagen, Sweden, that part of Europe. I feel like that's where I'm from ancestrally, and I, I want to check it out. Yeah, I'd love to go with you. Um, I'd love to go with you to Japan. Yeah, well, we should. Thank you out. so much for joining Live us. Live signing event. Everybody that has been involved, we really appreciate you supporting Hattie. Come here, collectibles. Uh, get your signed copy. Yeah, of the get link your above. signed copy. Tell your friends. We and signed. We signed. We signed. Guys. We signed a lot. So all your friends and your relatives, they 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 make great gifts. Um, <laughs> But thank you for joining us on our release day. We're so happy that Hattie Harmoning opening night is in the world. Today. And we hope um, to be speaking with everybody soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you.